Well, good morning, church. Welcome to the Ellis Residence. It's good to have you in my home. I wanted to get you all over one day, so I thought might as well get you all over at the same time. Happy Sunday or whatever day you're watching this on. Um, I've got a message this morning for you called The Invite, The Power of the Invite. And um, invites, they come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes they come by email. Sometimes they come through the through the door with a stamp and an address on. And sometimes they're given to you at church or in the playground, you get a kid's invite to a party. And sometimes I'm, my kids are invited to parties every single weekend. And uh, last year I received a really amazing, special invite. And that is to Tom and Shannon's wedding. Uh, Tom and Shannon are really loved in our church. Shannon works for the church and Tom, he's the one responsible for the live streaming this morning into all of our homes. And because of lockdown, because of COVID-19, they had to postpone their wedding. How amazing are they? Sorry, Tom and Shannon, they're still waiting for their invite. It was meant to be for their wedding. It was meant to be on the 16th of May. Because of the lockdown, it hasn't happened yet. So show them some love in the chat if you want. They're amazing. But invites are really special. They come in all sorts of sizes, all different colours. And invitations, they tell us that we are welcome. Invitations, they tell us that we are invited. Invitations, they tell us they are in, that we are included in what is about to happen. And when I think about invitations, I think about Jesus. Jesus was the greatest inviter of people. Jesus, he always was looking for people. Jesus was always seeking people. Jesus was always pursuing people and inviting people to step out of the lives that they knew into more, into a life that they could never imagine was available to them. And Jesus was always wanting the best for people. And this message this morning is a little bit raw, a bit rough around the edges, but really I'm so passionate about this message, um, about the power of the invite, because I've seen what is on the other end of someone inviting someone else. And uh, a month ago, we launched the Alpha course here in the church, our first ever online Alpha course, and it's going amazing. And the people on the Alpha have, have really impacted my life. And so at eight o'clock on a Monday night, we log on to Zoom and uh, we talk for 10 minutes, welcome, and then we watch, watch the Alpha talk together. And then we have a time of discussion. But I was so impacted personally, and I've walked with Jesus my whole life, but I was so impacted over the weeks as those individuals, those people on the squares, their people that God loves, as they started to talk about how they ended up on the Alpha, how they invite, uh, were invited to a dedication, which meant that it, it it, this Christianity came alive to them. I was so impacted hearing their stories as of friends that had invited them from the gym. They used to sit side by side on bikes in the gym when the gyms were open. And they used to uh, talk and then the Christian would have the courage and invite the person to Alpha. And uh, there's so much potential in the power of the invite, but so often, because of our fear, because of fear of man, we hold back on the invite. But I think that God, you know, now, today, God wants to stir that up in us as a church to have a new boldness for the invite. And I wanna take us together this morning to Luke 19, Zacchaeus, the tax collector. This is the story where Jesus is inviting the tax collector to dinner. He's inviting himself to have dinner with Zacchaeus. So let's read together. It says in chapter 19, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. So who was Zacchaeus? I don't know. It's a bit of a funny name. I don't know any Zacchaeuses in the church at the moment. Not yet. You never know what baby's going to be called next. 
Um, but Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector and he was employed by the Roman Empire and he was a bad boy. He made a living out of ripping people off and out of extortion and making the poorer poorer and making himself richer. So he was not a popular man, but Jesus decided that it was his time to meet with Zacchaeus. And it says, verse three, he wanted to see who Jesus was. This is Zacchaeus. But because he was short, he could not see the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. In the ESV, it says he was seeking to see who Jesus was. He wanted to see who Jesus was. And as I prep for sermons for Sundays or for youth, I often read the same scripture over and over to get that cemented in my heart. And as I was reading that over this week, I felt God highlight to me those words that he was seeking to see. And you know, so often in my own flesh, I think that people aren't seeking to see. I think that, you know, I'm driving down the road and see all these lovely, perfect families, never fighting in their gardens. We're definitely the noisiest family on our street, uh, always noise in our gardens. But you, we think, you know, that people have got it all together. We don't realise that actually they are seeking to see. Here in the story, we have Zacchaeus seeking to see. And often people are looking in all the, pla- the wrong places. You know, Jesus, um, Zacchaeus had heard the stories of Jesus. He'd heard the rumours. He'd heard the rumours of all the healings. He had heard the stories of the compassion. Some people um, were saying that Jesus was a fanatic, that he was a devil, that he was a blasphemer, that he was a heretic. Some people said that Jesus was a prophet. Some people were saying the son of God. But you see, now it was time for Zacchaeus to see with his own eyes who Jesus was. He was seeking to see. And it goes on. When Zacchaeus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. He came down at once and welcomed him gladly. So I read that and uh, we have Zacchaeus, Zach. He's up in the sycamore tree because he's trying to find Jesus and you know the song growing up, I'm not gonna sing it, don't worry. We leave that to Carla and Charlotte and the team. But Jesus meets him there, yeah? And he invites himself to his house. Wow, that's some courage. Jesus invites himself over to Zacchaeus' house and I think that's cool. He is the son of God, he can do what he likes. But as well in that moment, I'm thinking, because I'm a woman, I'm like, Did Zacchaeus text his wife to let her know that Jesus is coming for dinner? Because if she's anything like me, she'd be freaking out. What am I gonna cook, Jesus? I better get the kids off of Fortnite. I better get the girls off of TikTok. And I better better make us look like a good, all-rounded family. But it says that Zacchaeus welcomed Jesus gladly, and some translations say joyfully. And then verse seven, it says, all the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. And one I wanna draw from this story here is that what Jesus, we can learn from Jesus in the way that he invited others is that Jesus wasn't derailed by people's opinion, by the muttering, by the criticism, Jesus knew what he was called to do. He knew in his heart what he had come to earth for. And the reason that Jesus stepped out of heaven, that he stepped onto earth, that he walked with broken humanity, that he took the walk of shame to the cross and hung naked on the cross and died and rose again. And the reason he he did that was that we could have our relationship restored to God. Jesus knew his why. And I wanna ask you as a church today, and I wanna ask myself and Chris behind the camera, do you know your why? What is it that you're passionate about? 
What is the passions of your life? Maybe God wants to stir that up in your hearts today, stir it up in all of our hearts today. And another thing that I want to draw from the life of Jesus from this section is that Jesus wasn't derailed by people's rejection, by people's no. Um, I've often given out invites to people to come along to church. Uh, I invite them into having a relationship with God or to come to life group or come to toddler group. And I know these things are not happening at the moment, but one day again they will. And people can join us online or in Zoom groups or in Alpha courses. Um, But once I shared my testimony with a lady at work Uh, used to work in a local secondary school. So we were in the office doing some filing and uh, I felt God nudge me to start sharing my testimony because she seemed a spiritual woman and she's asking what I do, what am I passionate about. So I started talking about Jesus, talking about my parents, salvation, encounter with Jesus, how they nearly got divorced and mum couldn't conceive and and everybody in my family was getting divorced and, and and. And I felt it was going really well, if I can be honest, blatantly honest with you this morning. And at the end of the conversation, she said to me, Esther, just like you feel about Jesus, I feel the same about Buddha. Uh, Just like you feel about Christianity, I feel the same about Buddhism. And, you know, in that moment, in that time, I was like, oh, I was a bit discouraged. But, you know, Jesus, he wasn't derailed by people's no He was compelled by his overwhelming love for humanity and he wanted to restore them to relationship with his father. And then it says in verse 8, But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here I am, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor and I have cheated anybody, if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay them back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. And that is the gospel. That is what people are about. What this story is about is about people that are far away from God coming close to his heart for them. And Jesus was always moving in the direction of people. And you know, the truth is, is that we've all been Zacchaeus. We all need a saviour. We're all in need of Jesus. We're all in need of a sit down and a meal, a time with Jesus. Jesus was the great invited, a great inviter and he invited people into relationship. The Passion Translation says of that verse, it says, the Son of Man has come to seek out and to give life to those who are lost. You know, Jesus is saying, I want to bring you to life. I want to bring you to the fullness of life. I'm pursuing you. I'm chasing you. And there's nowhere that you can hide from my love because it's for you. And what I learned from Jesus is that Jesus had this ability to look people eye to eye. He found people. He looks for people. Jesus seeks people, you know, and he doesn't just see people as they are. He sees them as they're going to be. He sees them as they're called to be, who they were created to be. And I love that about our Jesus Jesus called the greatness out in people. And I believe that what, that's what we're called to do as a church, as followers of Christ, to call the God thing out in people, to help them see that there is some, someone that they can live for that is bigger than anything they could ever imagine. And we've been doing this Love Your Neighbour campaign since the beginning of the crisis. And church, you're amazing. And I know I always talk about it. But it's like every time I encounter some, someone, you're with me, church. You enable us to do this. And it's not just me. It's the team of workers that go delivering. But I think God 
is using the Love Your Neighbour campaign to stretch the heart of the church, to give us his heart. So I mentioned uh, the story of a lady. So we got her referral from Haven't Housing and we went, I went to meet her and uh, I took her groceries and uh, she came down from her flat and she just didn't seem well. Um, she didn't have much hair left. Um, and she started to talk about her story. Uh, and she's recovering from breast cancer. And the day before, she'd realised, she'd had a phone call that she was um, going to have to have an another mastectomy because she'd f they'd found more lumps, diagnosed that day before I went. And um, it seemed such a bleak, hopeless conversation, but Jesus inside of me, the Spirit of God started to nudge me and to, to tell her that we care, that we love her and that Jesus loves her and that uh, her hope, her, there are people that are praying for her and that we would be praying for her as a church. And as I began to share, tears started to fall down her face, not because of my words, because I'm a little bit crazy, but because she'd never heard these words before. She had been so rejected by society, living on the outsides of society, gleaming off the system, gleaming off the system. And in her broken state, she had never heard the words of compassion because all she'd heard in the last year of her life was words of rejection, words of there's no hope, hopeless, um, a terrible prognosis over her life. But Jesus wants to grow our hearts in this season for his love, for his people, for broken humanity. And I sense that God wants in this time to do that. We're never going to get this time back as a church. You know, as we abide in him and we have had so much more time to lean into him, God is going to give us his heart for people to love those who he loves. And that's my prayer, that we would have his heart for people and we would say, Jesus, send me. I'm available. Use me as your invite. When Jesus went out and called his disciples, uh, Peter and Andrew, he's walking along the Sea of Galilee. He said to them, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Okay, so they were fishers, fishermen, but he was calling him out to be fishers of people, fishers of men. And um, what he was saying in those words was that he was calling them, he was inviting them to a relationship to follow him, but also he was inviting them to purpose. He was telling them, that's your purpose in life. And, and this is what God desires of us, you know. He wants us to talk with him and to talk with him. He wants us to have a relationship with him every day in the highs and the lows. And we don't always get it right. Sometimes we're too busy. But also to talk about him. And I know and I sense in my being that God wants to establish his church as his presence in the world today. Our world is in need of Jesus more than ever. And we are his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Because we're his church, we're not my church, we're not Matt's church, we are his church. And people are saying now, you know, where's Jesus in the middle of this crisis? Where's Jesus in the chaos? Where is Jesus in my brokenness and in my pain and in, my, um, in me losing my job, in, in me feeling overwhelmed as a parent, homeschooling my kids and educating my uh, kids and, and also working full time? Where's God in what is going on in the world? There's a shaking going on in the world today. And we are the followers of Jesus. We are the hands of God in this world. We are the feet of God in this world. We are the, the mouth, the lips of God. We are the eyes and the ears of God. And God wants to reveal himself to the world through you and through me. 
we have the power of the invite in our hands. Not just the extroverts, not just the introverts, not just the people that are young or the people that are old that seem to have all the right words. God wants to use us all as his hands and his feet, as his ambassadors. And um, God wants us to let his story out of us. We are full of the story of God. We can simply say, this is where I was. This is the situation I was in, but then I met Jesus. And this is where I am journeying. This is where he rescued me from. And no one can take your story, the power of your God story. No one can deny your story because it's your story. You know, you've lived your testimony. And I just want to finish with this verse. I want to read this scripture over you, church. And this scripture, it fills me with courage. It fills my life with expectation for what God wants to do through us as a church. It lifts my eyes to the greatness and the amazing opportunities that God is going to bring us this week as we go out. And these are the famous words of the prophet Isaiah that Jesus echoed in the New Testament. And I want to speak this out over you and I pray that it would bring courage into your bones. And this is what it says. The spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you, yeah, you there, to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent us to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Lord, thank you for your church. Thank you that the spirit of the living God is upon your church as they sit in their living rooms, as they sit in their kitchens, maybe in bed with a laptop, Thank you that your precious Holy Spirit, your anointing is upon your church. And thank you that you're calling us to invite, whether it's to the Father's Day message next week, Father's Day service, or things that are coming across the summer, the things that the opportunities that you're going to raise up for us in the supermarkets, in the office workplace, Lord, in the school playground as some of the kids go back to school. May we have such a confidence within us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, that you want to use us. And I pray that we would just shine your love and reflect and be compelled by your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we are going to be fisher of men. Amen. Before we were ever looking for Jesus, the truth is, is that Jesus was looking for us. And before Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed that sycamore tree, Jesus was on his way through Jericho to meet with him at that tree. Jesus stepped out of heaven and stepped onto earth to bring us into that relationship with him. Jesus knew Zacchaeus' name. And right now where we are in our homes, wherever you are, Jesus knows your name. And Jesus knew what was going on in Zacchaeus' heart. And and Jesus knows what's going on internally in your heart. And Jesus knew what was going on in in Zacchaeus' life. And Jesus sees that in your life. And just like Zacchaeus, that Jesus extended that invitation to Zacchaeus, God right now is extending that invitation to you to come into your life, to offer you salvation, to give you a fullness of life and to make you come alive on the inside so that you would know right here and now why you were born, what is the purpose of your life. And in this moment now, all you need to do is you need to say, Jesus, I give you my life. And I would love to pray for you now 
pray a prayer with you, sorry, and to pray the prayer where you just invite Jesus into your heart. And we'll, we'll say this together as a church family now. And let's close our eyes and pray together. Jesus, today, I give you my life. I invite you into my heart. Thank you, you are my saviour, that you died for me. Forgive me of my sin and my wrong today. Today, I make you the Lord of my life. Thank you, you love me as I am. Come and transform me. Amen. Amen. Well, if you've said that prayer, you know, I could run around screaming in my house right now, which I can do because I'm here. But if you've said that prayer, then please do let us know. The phone number is on your screen. Send us a text. Or if you know any of the team, text them to let them know or put it in the chat that you've made that decision to follow Jesus, all of heaven, everyone in my house, me and, and, and Chris, we are celebrating that you've given your life to Jesus. Love you, church. Have a wonderful week.